This video is about using uh, our knowledge of parametric functions and the derivatives of those functions in order to calculate the speed of an object. You may or may not know already that we can use uh, differentiation when we're looking at rectilinear motion. We're looking at the function of uh, displacement or distance, which is often uh, written by S here. Um, if we call that displacement, which is uh, our measure of distance travelled by an object. If we differentiate that ds, in, usually in relation to t in, uh, over time, that means the change of distance over time, the rate of change of distance, is its velocity. And often called v for velocity. And if we differentiate uh, velocity with respect to time, the rate of change of velocity is what we would call acceleration. And these connections are very widely used in the idea of, of looking at objects in motion. And we can differentiate one function to get to one of the other aspects of velocity and acceleration. This is a connected uh, part of that, but it's slightly different. Um, because we have in parametric functions the ability to look at the individual x and y components of the movement of a body. So we in would normally get given an x component and a y component, some function of uh, t. And of course we can learn to differentiate them both separately. But what we have in each case here dx by dt and dy by dt is we have effectively the change in distance. The dx by dt literally means the, the change in the x coordinate in one particular time period with respect to time. So in one time period. And say that time period is a second, then dx by dt is how far it goes in, the object goes in one second. Effectively, its speed, it might be uh, centimetres per second or metres per second. And the dy by dt effectively gives us the change in the uh, y coordinate, which of course is at right angles to the x coordinate over that same time period, which might be something like a second. So what we have is a little insight into the effect of the distance the object travels in one time period horizontally and vertically. And if you look at this graph here, we have uh, an idea of the fact that if we represent the horizontal distance here, dx by dt, and the vertical distance here, dy by dt, I've put an arrow in it. It's not really a, a vector uh, component as such. Uh, it, but it's a distance so as far as we're concerned. Because they're perpendicular, we can make effectively a right angle triangle. And the, the shortest distance between the start and finish, the resultant vector, if you were thinking about vectors, is if the overall change of distance in that time period. In other words, it's its speed, overall uh, speed in that time period from uh, start to finish. So how do we get that speed? Well, it's basically a right angle triangle. If we know two short sides, we can work out the hypotenuse using Pythagoras' theorem. All we need to do is to work out the numerical value for dx by dt and dy by dt and use Pythagoras' theorem. Okay, so uh, we have a formula that we can uh, have a look at here which is just Pythagoras' theorem with our component parts. The sides of the triangle are dx by dt and dy by dt. Therefore, we can put that under the square root sign. So that's what we're going to use, uh, this formula here. Um, so it's worth learning. And in most cases, we're not going to put the algebraic expression in terms of t into the formula we're already going to have calculated a numerical value. So I'll show you in this example here. It's example 36, last example. 
Um, and it says here the position of a particle with respect to a coordinate axis system. So it's just saying there is a coordinate system such that uh, these two functions describe the x and the y motion of the particle. We're told that the unit of time, uh, t seconds, we're not actually told if the distance is in centimetres or metres, so we'll just have to keep that as a, a generic unit. It says calculate the speed of the particle when t equals 3. Uh, don't worry about this. Uh, t uh, is a value between 0 and 10. That just tells us that effectively we're observing it uh, up until uh, the kind of 10 second point. But we don't need to really worry about that too much. So calculate the speed of the particle when t equals 3. What we need from our information, we're told that x is 5t. I'm just going to write it as x rather than a function x of t. So I can write dx by dt. In this case, is just the derivative of 5t is 5. Our y equation, y equals 5t squared minus 8t, will give us a derivative, dy by dt, of 10t minus 8. And because we know that we're interested in the values when t equals 3, we can then work out a value for dy, dx by dt at t equals 3. We substitute 3 in to each of the, uh, the, the values of our derivatives. In this case here, however, interestingly, there is no t value left. It's a constant. So it doesn't matter what value of t is. It's always going to be 5. However, we can substitute 3 in to our dy by dt expression because we do have a t term here. We made up with 30 subtract 8 is 22. So we have two numerical values and we can work out the speed now because we were looking at the fact that the speed of the particle not just in one direction, not just in the x plane or the y plane, but across the plane, the speed is given by the square root of dx by dt, that's the horizontal part, plus dy by dt, that's the vertical part. And we can substitute in our numerical values here. So that's the square root of 5 plus 22, oh, 5 squared plus 22 squared which is the square root of 25 plus 484, which works out as the square root of 509. 509, uh, square root of 509 units per second, because it actually has a speed here. Um, that kind of works out as about 22.56 if you rounded it to two decimal places. It might be you're interested in keeping it an exact value. It might be from a practical point of view you're interested in its decimal approximation, but either way, that's how we can find the speed uh, of, of an object using our parametric functions. There we go. Have a, a practice at some of these.